let's move on. Next one I need to talk about. So, this is an update courtesy of Eric Griffin on his podcast called, what is it? It's just called Eric Griffin. No, it's called Hot Button. Is it Hot Button Day? Is that what it's called? Whatever. That's the title of the show. Griffin with Griffin, Hot Button Day, episode 184, live. And for whatever reason, Eric Griffin decided it was a good opportunity for him to get his voice heard regarding everything concerning Brendan Shaw v. Bobby Lee, Kalila, and H3. Um, obviously it makes sense because he's actually friends with these people. So, you know, maybe, let me give him some benefit of doubt there. But for somebody who clearly put their morals or their principles to one side for the betterment of a check, it's a bit hard to take anything he says seriously because he was one of the first people who was really quite public with his disliking of Brendan and his decision to start doing stand up. More so when he found out Brendan wasn't good. Because I think, he, you know, maybe the idea of somebody, you know, quitting MMA to start doing stand-up is a noble idea and does, see some, and does seem quite cool to watch somebody go through that journey of going from one profession to the next. But when they're clearly not good, but they also have the ego of somebody that is really good, it's easy to understand why some people would not like them. Especially if your own career was not at the place that you'd want it to be. You don't need to vocalize it, of course. You can just keep it yourself. But if you do vocalize it, stand on it. It is what it is. It's not that big of a deal. Like, what are you really losing out by not being pally pally with somebody like a Brendan Shaw? Aha, uh -huh. that's where it comes in, isn't it? He's friends with Joe. Everyone wants to be Joe's friend and get on the podcast and just have that stamp. He's like the male Oprah Winfrey, I always say. So it makes sense that he would want to kind of change his tune. And then during that time, too, again, to give Eric Griffin a bit of leeway because i'm familiar with him uh, you know um to some extent to give my opinion on this it i did get the impression also when he hooked up with that lady that he's engaged to who i guess they're soon to be married he kind of changed the way he spoke about things he became quite mature overnight it seemed like he grew up really quickly so maybe this is just his way of just growing up and realizing that hey it doesn't really matter ultimately if i just think this guy's funny or not he's willing to pay me to appear on his podcast the king of the sting um he's willing to give me some air time he seems reasonable enough he's not encroaching on my space and then off the on the to add to it also his own youtube channel and twitch and stuff started to pop up as well i remember he started bragging about how many subs he was getting and the money that was coming in and the ads and whatnot so he wasn't necessarily starving as much as he was maybe in the past when he did make those disparaging comments about brendan so all those things coming out at once probably led him to be in a position that he's in now where he clearly doesn't want to get on Brendan's bad side, but he's also super close with Bobby and he also doesn't want to be seen as a bad friend. But in this situation, there are no fence-sitting positions to have. It's either you think Brendan did nothing wrong or you think he did everything wrong, but there are no middle grounds. It's either your BGL, right, the big gay lion, and you're trying to excuse all the fuck shit, or you're on the other end, like the Fire and the Kids subreddit people, and you're just going ham at Brendan and picking apart every little thing that he does. But there is no middle ground. The only middle ground that really exists is just, I don't care. This is beneath me. This is dumb. The kind of Tim Dillon stance of things, right? I make a hundred grand a month for my Patreon. I don't need this nonsense. I mean, leave me alone. Like, that's probably the best stance to take about this. But this stance from Eric Griffin, I thought was very bizarre and very odd. But let's play it out anyway. Hear, he, hear what he has to say. Yeah. All right. So you in the comedy world, uh, comedy podcast world. You know, it is what it is. Uh, new people listening to my podcast, you probably don't know, what the hell is this guy even talking about, right? It is what it is, you know? So you have regular listeners of all the podcasts. I'm, I'm a part of a very small comedy podcast community, even though there's a lot of podcasts. But, you know, as you guys, if you know me, you know I'm very good friends with Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee is one of my best friends. We have a weird relationship, but it is what it is. I love Bobby dearly. I know, you know, I love his brother, Steve. They've been on my podcast a few times. I've been on Tiger Belly probably five or six times. I think I've been on Tiger Belly the most out of anyone. I think it's me and one or two other people that have been on there the most. Just quickly, and I promise I won't stop this too often. It's a very L.A. thing, right? to refer to somebody as a very good friend, but you have a very weird relationship. Or sorry, to refer to somebody as one of your best friends, 
but you have a very weird relationship. I wonder if in America, best friend has a different meaning to what we say in the UK or how we refer to friends in the UK, similar to like dating. Because I know sometimes, oh no, similar to the term like hooking up or whatever. Because I know sometimes in the UK, we, we classify dating and hooking up as like just meeting to get like a coffee or have some dinner. But you guys, dating and hooking up could mean having sex, you know, oral sex, like anything. It could go anywhere, kissing, funneling each other. It could go, it could cover a whole spectrum of things. So I wonder when someone says best friend and they say we have a weird relationship because it doesn't, it's like an oxymoron. Like if it's someone's your best friend, there, there shouldn't be a weird relationship. That should be your best friend. That should be somebody that you can rely on, come rain or shine to be there for you and you could be there for them. But when you say weird relationship, that usually connects somebody that, you know, your relationship is what it is. You might not keep in contact as often, but when you see each other, it's just like the new, it's just like, you know, old days, but it's just a weird thing to hear someone say best friend, but we have a weird relationship. Uh huh. Like if, if, if you're with relationship, just find other best friends. I don't know. Anyway, who cares? I go on every single year. It is what it is. Uh, I've been on Steve Lee's podcast a number of times. You know, they're my friends, Andrew Santino. He's one of my best friends. Both Bobby and Andrew are coming to my wedding, along with Steve. Um, you know, they're my friends. As you know now, I also, I am a regular on King and the Sting and now the Wing. King, Sting, and the Wing. But I was a regular on the show. I've been on Fire and the Kid a few times. I've, I've built a friendship with Brendan Schaub. Brendan is uh, also, you know, I consider Brendan a friend. I mean, we're not as close as I am with the other people, but, you know, it, it just takes time. You know, I had a very, I wouldn't say I had a contentious relationship with Brendan at first, but, you know, it, it started off with me being like, who the hell is this UFC fighter thinking he could be a comic, you know? I've come since to change my tune about that because it obviously doesn't matter what people think about someone's art. If you think someone's funny or not, it doesn't even matter. That's not what sells tickets. Whatever Brendan's got, his work ethic, whatever people like about him, it, it works. He's on like five, six, seven shows. He's built the Thick Boy Network. He's got two specials. Whether you like him or not, whether you think he's funny or not, it doesn't matter. People love to hate him. People love to love him, and they go see him. He sells out places. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to get people to come watch me. I'm a great comic. You hear what I'm saying? Listen to me. I'm a great comic. OK, you're going to have a good time when you come to my show. I just got to convince people to come to my show. So whatever he's got, he convinces people to come to his show. So whether you like him or not, I don't really care. He's changed my whole feeling about that. It don't matter what people think about someone. It don't matter if they're funny or not. All that matters is, is that people come watch them. That's all that matters. Um, He's being facetious. He's being facetious. Like, let's be real. It does matter, isn't it? <laughs> like, that's why you like certain people and you don't like certain people. If it was just all about the art, then your local person around the corner that's really hilarious would be as funny or as successful as somebody like a Kevin Hart. But those things do matter. They all kind of contribute to the to the kind of greater goal of achieving your aims, especially in the arts. But again. I don't blame the guy. Money does change people's opinion on things. We've seen what happened with Joe Rogan. The moment he got a big check from Spotify, suddenly censorship and stuff didn't really matter to him as much as it did before. We we know it. We all have numbers. I would like to think I don't have a number, but I'm pretty sure someone put a certain number in front of me and told me to get on social media and started to pretend. Yeah, someone if someone put if someone put a number in front of me that was crazy and told me to get on social media and start defending Brendan Shaw's comedy, I probably would do it. Right? <laughs> because why not it's a short life there's only a small niche of people that know about it anyway fuck it but i'd like to think i wouldn't i'd like to think i'd have principles and morals that would not allow me to do so because it just isn't my truth simple as that but they live in a weird vortex in it this vortex isn't really real life whatever it is it's not really even an la thing it's just whatever vortex they're in it's just not real so you have to kind of play make-believe with your own career and play make-believe with your own opinions on what you see around you. So whether it's you not selling tickets, it's like, oh, because, you know, the show was dead or I didn't promote on a Monday or because this social media person go out when clearly it's just people don't like you that much to buy tickets to come and see you. It's pretty binary. But you have to kind of work all these fictions in your head to make it make sense. The same goes when you see somebody who might be less funny than you um, less funnier than you sorry um or not as funny as you getting on stage and selling out different places you have to justify in your head why 
you should be getting what they're getting and why they're, you're not getting what they're getting. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a weird little thing you have to kind of um, tell yourself in your brain. So I don't really blame him too much for it, but it is funny to see a grown adult trying to rationalize and spin these things in their heads to make it make sense when clearly it doesn't it just doesn't like it's not it's not a bad thing it's not a harsh thing it just doesn't make any sense we all know it <laughs> um, and also it's hilarious how he's describing brendan everything's hard work nothing about being funny it's all hard work it's all hustle it's all entrepreneurship but it's nothing about hey is this guy funny like absolutely barnstorming funny like he's getting funny every year's improving he might have started off really bad but that's what happens to all of us when we're coming up he's getting there he'll be good nah it's just all you know he's got three podcasts he's got two specials as if those things are markers of success and the funny thing is he wouldn't be saying this if they weren't friends that's what we all know that's that's the hypocrisy of this whole thing if they weren't friends or if he wasn't getting paid which was contributing to his, you know, life that he's going to be leading now as a married man and hopefully maybe starting a family, maybe buying a house. He wouldn't be saying this stuff. So clearly they can, all, they can all be bought. They can all be bought. Every single one of them can be bought. And if they and if they get on Rogan, God forbid Rogan does anything bad. If they get on Rogan, they would never say anything bad about him again because he essentially has given them the golden ticket. It's, it's okay. Again, I understand it. Just be honest about it. That's the thing I have with it. I'm okay with them, you know, licking ass and pretending they're all going to be flipping friends and this person's funny, that person's funny, but, you know. In terms of business, you know what I'm saying? You can all have your different tastes. So anyways, I've, I've, I've been on uh, King and the Sting now for, it's. I think it's, you know, it's been quite a, it's been almost a year. So I have a relationship with him too. Okay, that being said, there's some sort of drama going on that I have no, I, I am not privy to this drama other than it's spilling over into my world. So I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know. They don't, we don't talk. I don't, I didn't know what was happening. All right. I didn't know what was happening. And then all of a sudden I'm getting hit up like, you know, so whatever happened between Bobby Kalila and Brendan, however they, whatever happened, whatever happened on Trash Tuesday, whatever happened between Annie, who all these people, I don't know. And it had nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. And honestly, I don't care. So however, and I don't appreciate that the fact that the shit is public, that they're dealing with it the way they're dealing with it and making money at, in the process of doing it. So it just, it's, so it's like, it's all for content, you know? So, and so then, it all it just riles up all the fans who think they're a part of it. You people think you're a part of it. These people don't care about you or your opinion. So you have your own opinion, and then you're coming at me, bullying me. Y'all are people are keep coming on my game stream. They're coming on my chat. They're coming on my Instagram, like, yo, where do you stand on this? As if it matters what you think. D listen. You know, one thing I've realized, right, covering this stuff lately, these guys are really dorks, isn't it? That's what they actually are. Part of me thought stand-up comedians were like social outcasts, right? People like kind of vagabondy type guys. You know, the kind of person who's like, you know, when you go to like a hostel and have you ever been traveling? I have, right? I did a bit of traveling in Central America and some of South America. And you sometimes end up in these random hostels, let's say in like Nicaragua, right? And there'll be like a 40-year-old guy there backpacking, smashing all the bartenders, right, in the local town or all the Australian tourist girls, right? This random dude with a ponytail who's got great stories. He looks amazing, but he's like 45 years old. And sometimes you look at him, one day, some days you look at me like, oh, wow, he's aspirational. I want to be that guy. And other days you look at me like, it's sad, isn't it? You're 45, bumming around hostels, smashing, flipping um, tourists. But usually they're incredibly funny. They've got great stories, right? And they're great time, great persons to hang out with. They, the only thing is sometimes they end up asking you for too much money and then always broke and all this sort of stuff, always got excuses. But usually, in my head, for whatever reason, I would have I thought someone like that was a BS stand-up comic. 
somebody who's lived an unconventional life, somebody that used to be a DJ at a strip club, a bouncer at a nightclub, who used to maybe manage musicians, who used to, whatever, something that would require you exist on the outskirts of normal life. You know what I mean? But really and truly, these guys are just dorks. That's what they are. They're just dorks who then get older, start doing stand-up, and then start cosplaying as some sort of... um freedom fighters right as some sort of bastions of free speech or whatever it may be called or anti-censorship or whatever and then you have this guy who's i don't know he's in his 30s he's in his 40s he's crying and complaining about bullying and what's the bullying he's talking about not somebody approaching him on the street harassing his family calling up his family's work up uh, you know place of work um extended friendship group no just fans asking him, hey, because you're friends with these people, what's your opinion on this pretty crazy story that's been all over the internet the last few weeks? That to him is deemed as bullying. That to him is, is enough for him to be riled. Because I get the feeling, watching this video, he seems quite angry. I'm like, why is this angry? Why is this guy angry for? It's got nothing to do with you. And he's really pent up and pissed off. It's because he legitimately thinks this is bullying. This is bullying to him. This is something that he feels like is unfair. Like he's being put into a corner. He's been made to choose. He's been made to, God forbid, have a position. He's just unraveling here in a weird way. And maybe it's because fundamentally he's an absolute dork with a capital D. Somebody who no one would give a shit about if he wasn't a comedian. Not in a mean way, do you know what I mean? But he's not cool. He's not interesting. Just a guy, in it who just tells jokes on the stage. And that's essentially what it is. If you didn't know about stand-up or care about the extended universe of these people, you probably wouldn't know who he is. Obviously, you probably wouldn't know who I am either. But still, you know what I mean? They make it seem as if they're really important. And then when you try to... Yeah, this is the thing. This is the... This is the flipping nonsense that kind of perpetuates from these people. They make it seem as if they're very important. Then when you treat them as being people that are very important and you give them the respect or attention people that are important get by talking to them, um, asking them questions, getting in their DMs, leaving them comments, tagging them in things. When it's stuff that they don't like, they deem as bullying and they start crying and complaining on their podcast. Make your mind up, mate. Do you want fans? <laughs> Do you want to sell tickets? <laughs> Do you want to take people on truck walks? <laughs> You're going to have to put up with a few of these comments, isn't it? Like, why are going for this guy, man? He's a fucking loser. <laughs> He's crying because people are asking him com to comment on a story concerning one of his best friends, remember, who he doesn't really get along with well. Standard LA, a best friend you don't get along with, or then you're crying that people are asking you questions. Like, just to, you can you can just ignore them too if you want, mate, or give them the big block. It's not a big deal, in it. God damn it! What an absolute dunder done. What I now know behind the scenes, it ain't my business to talk about publicly, so I'm not going to. All I'm saying is, why are you bullying me? Why are you coming at me with this drama? As if like, you know what I mean? Like, would I know this? I know they going to take care of it on their own. It's a lot of he said, she said. It's a lot of uh, everybody has their own perception of what they think the other person is doing and saying. And then other people are involved that they're going to all come out with their own stuff. You will see. And this week, it, they're going to handle their business. What I'm requesting is don't bring me in it. What do I have to do with this? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know.
So, so the mic was not on there. Sorry, I was just. <laughs> Apologies. I, I was basically saying, right? I was just saying. The funny thing about this guy is that <laughs> he's telling, like, he's he's saying people shouldn't be involved and shouldn't get emotional about this stuff. It's not your business and blah. I don't know whatever he's talking about, right? But isn't this the same guy that was crying when Bobby Lee wasn't getting online and playing computer games with him, Twitch, whatever they were doing, right? They were streaming on Twitch and I think and Eric Griffin was doing some sort of show or something. He wanted Bobby to get on it and Bobby was doing what Bobby does and ghosting him and not being around and being elusive and doing his whole weird thing. And then, if I'm not mistaken, he was also really upset when he found out Bobby Lee was starting Bad Friends with Andrew Santino. Because from what we know about these people and how they present themselves online, Eric Griffin and Bobby Lee have been friends way longer than Eric, Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino have been friends. So it, you, it would be a bit weird that you would see all of a sudden, you know, Andrew Santino with Bobby Lee doing a podcast. If anything, it should be Eric doing it with him. So clearly that was a sign that maybe they're not as close as friends as he thinks they are. He thinks he thinks they're best friends, which, you know, they're obviously not. But, you know, maybe they're L.A. best friends. And he was really upset by it, which he probably should be. He has every right to be upset. Maybe because he wasn't told. Maybe because it was done behind his back. Maybe because he was promised he would be doing it with Bobby instead. Whatever it may be. But clearly people and i think that's the point i made in one of the videos where i was talking about oh he's getting kicked off king of the sting and then clearly my prediction didn't didn't pan out because he was back on the show as a regular you know after the fact but from what i've seen with little things here and there people in that comedy scene don't really rate eric griffin much either he might think he's a great comic but his peers don't really treat him like he's a great comic they they, they treat him like like nothing, do you know what I mean? Like not like nothing, but do you know what I mean? He doesn't have the reverence that he probably should be having with his friends. But they treat other people who are way less funnier than him the same way that he would want to be treated. Interesting predicament there. But regardless, man, this guy is a very um bizarre human. And then here's the thing that people don't understand. This is how I am now. You come at me one time out of pocket on my Instagram, one time. If you say some disparaging things about me, my lady, just something that I go, that's out of pocket. What are you going to do? I'm not going to explain what that means. What are you going to do? If you don't know, you don't know. What are you going to do? Let me tell you what happens to you. What are you going to do? Remove follower, restrict, hide story. I don't even block you. I just leave it like. So if, if that's the case, why are you talking about this now? Why are you crying about this? Like, honestly, this is you have to be is there no level of embarrassment at this stuff like it's like people who share screenshots of people that have blocked them online like what are you doing that for who's meant to be patting you on the back that you got blocked by somebody for saying something rude to them congratulations you're an arsehole wow good on you you got blocked for being an arsehole to somebody haha -ha. congrats same with this why is he announcing he's restricting people and limiting them to their story who cares if this is something rude to you, you should be within your right to block them. Of course. If they're coming after you or your lady, of course you should be blocking them. But these weird threats online about people leaving comments is just completely R-worded. It really is. Like, you're a stand-up comedian, brother. Like, I don't know. Maybe let stuff roll off your back. Is it really that big of a deal? It, you're not even involved. <laughs> this is the thing. He's not even involved in this. Like, what? Or is he afraid it's going to come out that maybe he's the one that gave flipping <laughs> Brendan Galila's number or something? I don't know. Why is he bothered about this stuff? Like, fuck me, man. Just chill. Relax. If you say something mean, I'm going to block, limit, remove, comment. It's like all these games. <laughs> that, okay? I'll leave it like that. Now, when your message comes up on my Instagram now, it says restrict. I just delete. I will never, ever see anything you have to say to me ever again. If you tweet at me something, it's out of pocket. I hit mute. I will never, ever see anything you have to say again. That's how I deal with it. And that's what I've been doing now for four days. Just timing out people on my Twitch. They keep coming. Yo, hey, what do you think about this? As if I owe you an explanation. That's the set. That's like the craziness of it. You know, it's bananas.
how people are if you don't only want an explanation why are you talking about this like that's what i said earlier before there's only two positions to have on this thing two either you believe everything bobby lee kalila are saying or you believe what brendan's saying but the other position to have in the middle is i don't give a fuck this is just entertainment or i don't care I'm out smashing flipping tens on the road. I don't care. I'm making loads of money. I'm selling loads of tickets. That is, that is, that's the other position. But you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't talk about it and then say you don't want to talk about it. You can't complain that if people ask you questions and then you explain why you're not answering the questions. And then you explain how you're blocking them. You just got to leave it alone. But you can't because the addiction to attention is just so high. Stand up comedian, give me attention all the time. Please, 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 please. It's like, it's not that big of a deal, really. People cheat on each other all the time. People slide into DMs of people all the time, really. It happens every single day, I'm assuming. Come on, man. Get a grip, my G. But here he is crying and complaining about this. God damn it. Uh, you know, they're so invested in this. <laughs> Y'all so invested as if you're sitting there. That's the nature of podcast, though. I get it. When you watch a podcast, you watch comedians being sort of that you feel like, oh wow, I'm 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 privy to some insider information. Trust me, you are not. No one's thinking that he's probably the same type of guy that watches 90 Day Fiance and then gets on social media and starts writing flipping threads about why this guy should do this and why this woman should do this. If you do that too, you have no leg to stand on. It's the same thing. No one sits here, like even myself being one of them. I'm not, I'm not privy to nothing. I interpret the situations as I see it with my eyes and listening to what people say, but that's it. I don't go any further. I don't even do, I don't do even the smallest bit of research. I don't try and find out what people's actual names are, what they, whatever they present online, that's what I go by. I don't do red bar research. I'm not there digging into people, trying to find out who does what. I don't give a fuck. It's not that deep. It really isn't. It's just entertaining to watch from afar as all these other people are that sh tuning into the stream. They do the same thing. But I would love it. I, I bet, honestly, I really do bet this guy is one of those people that writes essays about 90 Day Fiance. He's there flipping, breaking down why Game of Thrones season eight was so bad, why the writers didn't do this and do that. But then if you pay too much attention or ask him too many questions about his friends in stand-up comedy who provide content online to a similar degree as any other TV series and maybe more in terms of their frequency, they put them out, all of a sudden you're overstepping the mark. All of a sudden you're get, you're doing too much. You're trying to be involved in things you shouldn't be involved in. All right, all right, mate, all right. There is more to this than you will ever hear or know about. Yeah, and sure. And it's none of your business. So stop attacking people who like are a little bit connected. It's like I'm in the middle. You know, y'all coming at me like I'm supposed to like have draw a line in the sand and be like, I'm never talking to this guy again or never talking to that guy again. What are you talking about? One guy, you know what I mean? Isn't but that's the thing though? Isn't one guy your best friend? If one guy's your best friend and one guy you've only met because you work with him, shouldn't that be a reason for you to draw a line in the sand? <laughs> no. If one person is actually your best friend and you've only met someone because you work with them, your loyalties should be easy to pick in it. You should be easy to who you're gonna be siding with, right or wrong. That's what a best friend should be about. If your best friend comes and says, look, I just, I, I need a, bo a body to be buried. Part of the, part of the um, rationale of being a best friend is being like, I hate you for doing this to me and getting me involved, but where's the shovel? That should be part of being a best friend. Not, oh, but actually it's the, mm, uh, uh, no, get me the shovel. You're a piece of shit. Don't talk to me for a year, but I'm going to help you bury it in this moment. That's what a best friend should be doing, isn't it? But again, this is LA best friend, isn't it? So circumstantial things. I mean, what? Like, anyways, it don't even. It, it just. I'm just saying. I feel for both everybody involved in this situation because it's very complicated and nuanced. It's a nuanced situation, and I feel bad for the people involved. But like, again, don't bring me into this. That's what my request to you. Okay. 
I'm letting it go today in the chat. Like I can't just time out everybody in the chat that wants to say what they want to say. You know what I mean? So I'm going to let this go today because there's nothing I can do about it. Right. I don't want to spend here all day because I'm live right now going in and doing this. But I understand. I is one of those people. He's one of those people that times out people that limits you. Like, oh, this guy's a fucking. He whines and complains all the time. He sits there flipping, whining and complaining when you ask him questions. He's just a big old bag of misery, isn't it? Like, just fucking hell. Stand, you know, I understand what you feel, but like, you don't got access like this, like with me, with them. <laughs> like, all right. These, these two guys. Like, All right, I can't do this anymore. He's gloating that he knows friends. And he's, okay, now he's sucking himself off. All right, cool, bruv. Congratulations. Anyway, you can watch the rest of it if you want. Eric Griffin talking over his ass. It is what it is. Let's move. Let's move.